Hi, I'm Tracy Larson. Welcome to my final project presentation for CIS 3107. The Parrots Umbrella is a small nonprofit organization created less than a year ago to assist people who care for parrots. While parrots can make amazing companions, there are also some serious issues with keeping parrots as pets. Parrots have wings and they're meant to fly. Captivity often results in quote unquote behavioral problems because it's difficult to keep them busy enough. The boredom and frustration causes some captive parrots to resort to mutilating their feathers and skin, leading to life threatening infections. Parrots live anywhere from 10 to 60 years in captivity. They are naturally loud animals who are capable of inflicting serious injuries with their beaks when they're frightened or frustrated. With that background in mind, onward to the database. I had a discussion with the other two founders and one volunteer to create these business rules for determining entities and relationships for the database. The contact entity will contain all the demographic information for any person making contact with the parrot's umbrella. A contact is either a volunteer or a client, but may also be both. Volunteers will offer at least one service and may or may not be associated with one or many encounters. Clients will have at least one parrot, which in turn must be associated with at least one encounter. It was determined that placeholder parrots would be created for potential adoption clients. An encounter must have a service identified. And services may be associated with zero, one, or many volunteers and encounters. Well, the conceptual model is meant to be a high level view of the database. I went a little overboard and started adding primary keys, foreign keys, attributes and constraints right off the bat. Uh, please note that the contacts have subtypes of volunteer and client with an overlapping constraint, meaning that a client could become a volunteer or a volunteer may request assistance as a client. Because a volunteer may offer more than one service and services can be offered by more than one volunteer, a composite entity was required to bridge the many-to-many -many relationship. The logical model shows all the details. This is where primary keys and foreign keys are identified and when the many-to-many -many relationship would have been identified and resolved to achieve normalization. The flow of this database centers on the encounter. The encounter is generated at first contact and will at the very least include the volunteer and the client email or phone number if no other information is given. The arrows on the model will help determine the order of table creation and drop table order on the reset script. The first section of the reset script is a drop table script which checks to see if a table is present and then drops the table if the result is not null. Tables are dropped in the reverse order of creation. Before an encounter can be initiated, a volunteer must exist. Volunteers are a type of contact, so this is the first table created. Note the choice to use int identity as primary key in the contact, service, parrot, and encounter tables with the 1000 sequence identifying a contact, 3000 a service, 5000 a parrot, and 6000 an encounter. There is a unique constraint on the email address to assist in avoiding duplicate records. The volunteer service composite table uses a composite primary key of the contact and service primary keys. Note, uh, the count order is missing the 2000 and 4000 ranges, which resulted from the decision to use the contact primary key as the primary key for volunteer and client tables. This may be serendipitous as it will also extend the number of contact records entered before running into the service sequence of 3000. Notice that the client table is collapsed due to space constraints on the slide. Anytime a foreign key is identified in any of the create table scripts, a reference table has been identified. For the encounter table, the decision was made to force an entry into the volunteer field. No other fields could be identified as not null because initial contacts are often missing information. There is an audit trail 
with each encounter, recording the creation date, created by, modified by, and the date, and closed by, and the date. With all the tables built, I could then insert records. Note that for the contact, service, parrot, and encounter tables, there's no reference to a primary key ID because this will be created in sequence automatically by the int identity primary key. Otherwise, all fields are listed and then the data identified. Note the use of get date for the encounter created date field. Tables have been built and data has been inserted. This script demonstrates select queries for the database. Select on line 13 not only identifies the fields, but also describes how the column headers and data elements should look in the result. Last name, first name, and initial will be merged into one cell, and each table name has an as statement for the column header label. There is a left join, leaving only the data from the contact table that matches the ID identified on the volunteer table. And finally, the where statement asks for only those volunteers with a Y in the background check pass field. Note this field is not visible in the final result. This query is joining several tables to show a list of encounters, the from table, with the associated service volunteer name and date the encounter was opened. Because the encounter ID is the first table selected, the default is to place it as the first column and sort by those entries first. Building off the previous examples, this query with a couple of left joins demonstrates order by, which instructs the sort to be by parent age rather than the default first table listed in the select statement. The DESC statement reverses the default ascending order of smallest to largest. And with more data, it may be useful to include a second order by parameter to cause those with the same age to be sorted on species, name, or some other table. This slide shows some text highlighted in blue. In SQL Server, any selected text that is not green will run when the execute button is clicked. If no text is selected, all text that is not green will run. Example four shows results in a short list of services with null entries to let the parrot's umbrella know where volunteers are needed. This is achieved by the composite table of volunteers and services using a full alder join on services to show the descriptions. Then an additional left join is used on the volunteer table with where and is null to result in only those services with no volunteer associated. The last example demonstrates the group by statement, whereas an order by statement will sort values based on an order of tables, group by identifies a group of records for aggregate functions like sum, count, and average. This example uses count to show how many parrots are in each species group. This ends my presentation. Thank you for watching.